and then he fulfills the promise. He says, Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. According to all that he promised. No one has failed. It says there has not, there has not failed one word of all his good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses in sermon. He said, because God fails not. And he fulfills his promise, all the promises he has made, and the one we're claiming now, and the one we're standing on now, is fulfilling that as well. He has not disappointed the people who came before us, and the people of the present day is not going to disappoint anyone. And those who are, the, those who are coming, the, uh, the people of the next generation, is still going to bless them because of that perpetually. We're praising the Lord. Look at number two here. Number two here of the, its uh, present praise to God for his will over mankind his will over mankind he tells us in Daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 21 and he changes the times and the seasons and he removeth kings and setteth up kings that he is all the kings who are reigning, all the kings who are ruling, those who ruled in the past, even Nebuchadnezzar, he placed him there. Even Belshazzar, he placed him. Even Darius, he placed him. Even Cyrus, he placed him there. God says, is the one in charge and is in control over mankind. So that's why the children of God are not perplexed and they are not, their hearts are not palpitating and their lives are not up and down and they are not bothered about this is going to happen. Who will be there? Who will be there? The man of God's choice will be there. No worry in your heart. No anxiety in your heart. This is happening now because of that. That's what they say. That's happening now because of that. And then people are wondering, uh, how shall we send our children to school if this person comes in? How shall we have enough to eat if this person comes in? How shall we practice our faith if this one comes in? Uh, God is in charge. In our country here, God is in charge. In all the continent of Africa, God is in charge. That's why you are calm. Don't get into discussion with those who do not know God. Don't stand on the street corner discussing with the people that do not know that God is overall over the whole of mankind. And don't be arguing in your home. You're eating and then somebody brings up, look at this, look at this, and it's within one month now this will happen, that will happen. Why don't you enjoy your food and leave all that in the hands of God? And God will do the best for our country. Because it says, he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings, he does, and setteth up kings, he does, to give, he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that no understanding. Look at Jeremiah. We're looking at uh, Jeremiah chapter 27. And we're looking at verse 5. Jeremiah chapter 27. Reading from verse 5. I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and by my outstretched arm. And I have given it to whom it seemed meet unto me. He said, it's the one that does that. He said, I created the earth and all the nations of the earth and your country and my country, our country, that he created everything. And then it says, and I have given it unto whom it it seemed meet unto me. So, we're not going to have any sleepless night. Who will be there? Who will be there? When he comes, well, we know. No sleepless night. No anxiety. 
and no discussion that will jolt us we are believers in God and God has said he will give it to whomsoever seems right unto him he will do it we're looking at Psalm 75 and we're reading from verse 6 in Psalm 75 verse 6 for promotion coming neither from the east nor from the west nor from the south look at verse 7 verse 7 says but God is the judge he putteth down one and setteth up another amen we're coming to number three here number three we're looking at personal praise to God for his gift of wisdom and might in Daniel chapter 2 reading from verse 22 Daniel chapter 2 we're looking at verse 22 he revealed the deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him in verse 23 it says I thank thee and praise thee O thou God of my fathers who has given me wisdom and might and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee and for thou has now made known unto us the king's matters Daniel praised the Lord and his friends praised the Lord with him because God, God alone that could reveal secrets and could give wisdom and might to anyone he has revealed the secret unto them and when it comes to your turn that you know in secret that the philosophers of the world the coaches in the world and the trainers of the world and the investigators of the world could not reveal unto you and then you go to God everything belongs to him wisdom might secrets all belong to him he will reveal unto you no secret will perplex your life no secret will give you high blood pressure that you are and sleepless nights that you are just there on the bed you cannot sleep because there is something you don't know you are wondering about something how will this affect my life and my family rest your mind he reveal that secret to you when you came at psalm 119 verse 164 psalm 119 verse 164 it says seven times a day do i praise thee because of thy righteous judgments and then in verse 165 great peace at day which love thy love and nothing shall offend them nothing will jolt you nothing will confuse you nothing will embarrass you because your mind is stayed on him and great peace at day which love thy love and nothing nothing and nothing shall offend them and somebody said amen. amen look at matthew chapter 11 reading from verse 25 matthew 11 verse 25 at that time jesus answered and said i thank thee o father lord of heaven and earth because thou hast hid these things from the wise and the prudent and hast revealed them unto babes babes in christ new uh, children newborn children in christ in your simplicity of mind you know god is your father now and he has all the secrets in his hand and when you ask him he will reveal these things unto babes in jesus name and look at verse 26 there in verse 26 even so father for it seemed good in thy sight verse 27 verse 27 says all things are delivered unto me of my father and no man knoweth the son 
but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father, save except the Son, and he to whom whomsoever the Son will reveal him. I pray that when your time comes, there will be no embarrassing silence from heaven in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Point number three is the dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. You know, when you think you know something, and then you now come to the person that had the dream originally, and you are to appear before him, and you come, and you look at his face, is still a little bit angry and is still wondering, Daniel, you have come. Can you tell me the district? Do you know for a certainty that you have the secret if you didn't know who your God is? If you didn't know the revelation of the Heavenly Father? If you didn't have the assurance of faith, you'll be jolted a little, but not Daniel. No doubtful reservation. Everything that he had heard, that he had known, he knew. This is the truth. Dynamic presentation without any doubtful reservation. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 24. In Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 24, Therefore Daniel went in unto Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy, to kill, to slay the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. If your life could be a source of preservation to other people, those who should have died, those who should have perished, your life, your knowledge, your wisdom, your vision, your passion brings life unto them. Those who are under the fear of death and a fear of death because of sickness, of fear of death because of the harassment of the devil, of fear of death because of a secret decree against their lives. And then you as a believer saved, sanctified, and baptized in the Holy Ghost, you can come and your life could become a preservative for the people that should have died. I pray the Lord will so use your life. He said, destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king, and I will show unto the king the interpretation. We're dividing this to three parts. Number one, number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. Number two is the faithful declaration of future worsening kingdoms. Number three is the firm decree of the foremost wise king, the king of heaven. We're looking at number one. Number one is the fearless Daniel before the frightened warrior king. We're looking at Daniel chapter 2 again and we're reading from verse 25 now. In verse 25 it says, Then Ariok brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, unto the king, I have found a man. I have found a man. I have found a man. I pray at a time when the world has confusion, when your world has confusion, and when uh, the people around you, when they are perplexed because they do not have solution to the problems confronting them, I pray they will find you that you can supply the answer. When they're looking for a woman, that a woman of God that can do this, I pray they will find you in Jesus' name. I have found a man of the captives of Judah. Don't worry about what they say, you know, captive of Judah, unemployed person, somebody from that unknown tribe, somebody from that port. Don't worry about that. It is what you have that will bring you before the king. 
and it is what you know that will bring you before the king who is that who is that what is that lowly fellow there is that an educated person there don't worry about that it is what you have it is what you know that will bring you before the king once you have the solution the solution to the problems of this life what where you came from and your stature and all, whatever all that will not matter i have found a man of the captives of judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation we're looking at verse 26 in verse 26 it says the king answered and said to daniel whose name was Beshaza, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof. Daniel, are you sure you have the solution to this problem? A national problem. Are you sure you have solution to this a problem that perplexed everybody? That even me, that I had the dream I had forgotten. Are you sure that you are able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? Verse 27, in verse 27, then Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king has demanded cannot the wise men and the astrologers and the magicians and the soothsayers show unto the king. Look at uh, chapter 21 of uh, Luke. Luke chapter 21, we're reading from verse 24. In Luke 21, 24, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations and jerusalem shall be trodden down of the gentiles until the times of the gentiles be fulfilled what's the relationship of that what what we're learning the dream is about the kingdoms of the gentile world and those uh, gentile worlds they rule another one will come another one will come another one will come until the times of the Gentiles be over. And so this dream actually stretches between from the time of Nebuchadnezzar, who was the king of Babylon, an empire, an emperor, and then it goes on to the Middle Persian Empire, that is another kingdom that will fall, and then the Grecian Empire will rise up, that will fall until the time of the Romans. And all those kingdoms, four of them, all those kingdoms one after the other all those kingdoms in a large expanse from that time before christ came until christ came and until the second coming when it was thrash and crush and destroy all those kingdoms and then the stone will become a mighty mountain all over the world that jesus will be the king of kings and the king and the lord of lords and the king of the whole universe that's the dream and that's how it spanned such a large period until the times of the gentiles be fulfilled look at verse 26 in verse 26 men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of heaven shall be shaken and yet daniel came in without any fear without any timidity and without any fright at all and without any doubt what if i miss it look at Acts chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 9. Acts chapter 18, verse 9. Then speak the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Be not afraid, but speak and hold not thy peace. The Lord had sent him with the message of the gospel 
to the Gentile world. And when he was at Corinth and appeared that, you know, things were rough, the Lord assured him, be not afraid. The same thing the Lord is saying to us, anywhere he sends us, and whatever he sends us to do, whatever we see, the sight that dazzles, and the things that might even torment the heart of the average man or average woman, the Lord is saying, be not afraid, I'm backing you up. I sent you and I told you to proclaim the word of the gospel to the people you are meeting. Be not afraid, but speak. Speak loud, speak convincingly, speak from all your heart and hold not thy peace. In verse 10, verse 10 says, For I am with thee. No man shall set on thee to hurt thee. Amen. When you know that, you'll go to your office confidently. When you know that, you'll live in your community confidently. When you know that, you will preach the gospel without fear and without fright. Anytime, anywhere. Because it says, I have much people in this city. Then in verse 11, in verse 11, and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of God among them. We're looking at number two here. Number two here is a faithful declaration on future worsening kingdoms. Now it's going to tell the dream, and the dream is going to tell about the kingdoms of the earth from one to the other from the other to the next one, from the next one to the final one, before Christ will come. And this is about the kingdoms of the world that will be going from bad to worse, and worse to worse, and worse to the worst. It tells us in Daniel chapter 2, reading from verse 28, Daniel chapter 2, we're reading from verse 28, but there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets, do not be afraid or ashamed to declare that, that a God exists anywhere you are. And, you know, because I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, whether they are Jews or Gentiles, do not be ashamed. And here uh, Daniel was not ashamed. He said, but there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be. Be. In the latter days, the dream was not just for the days, for the time, for the period when Nebuchadnezzar was alive. It will be for the latter days, the dream and the vision of thy head upon thy bed are these. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, as for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed now daniel is revealing even the thoughts that nebuchadnezzar had before the dream came he said uh, nebuchadnezzar you must remember when you were to sleep you were thinking in your heart what shall be after you have left, because you are going to leave. Although the magicians and astrologers, the same king, live forever, you and I know that you are going to depart. And the, the thought came to your mind, what shall come to pass hereafter? And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee. What shall come to pass? In verse 30, in verse 30, he tells us, but as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest know the thoughts of your heart. He said that's the reason why. Now, the confidence that Daniel had. The declaration that Daniel made fearlessly, courageously, without being afraid of Nebuchadnezzar 
of Ariok, of any other uh, uh, Chaldean. That's the kind of courage he wants us to have. That's the kind of mind he wants us to have when he sends us to declare what will come upon people now and also in the future. Jeremiah chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 7. Jeremiah chapter 1. Reading from verse 7. But the Lord said unto me, unto me, Jeremiah, and unto you as well. The Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Then in verse 8, it tells us in verse 8, be not afraid of their faces. Because you think their faces show their mind. Their faces reflect the thoughts they have. Their faces will show you what they are planning, what they are thinking. And if they are going to hurt you or harm you, you'll see it on their faces. Except they train themselves not to show it on their face. And so, uh, uh, Jeremiah, don't be afraid. Do not be afraid of their faces for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord in verse 9 it says then the lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth and then in verse 10 it says see i have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdoms and to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant it doesn't want us to be you know shivering and shaking and timid and fearful and frightened before the people he sends us to god loves them and he sends us a message of love that will save their soul, that will deliver them from eternal death, that they will not perish. And if you carry such a wonderful message, a life-saving message, a soul-saving message, and you love the people you are speaking to, then you and God has assured you that he is sending you. He put his word in your mouth. You will not be afraid in Jesus' name. I will not be afraid in Jesus' name. We're looking at 1 Timothy chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter time some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirit and doctrines of devils. Look at verse 6. Even in that situation, in verse 6, it says, If thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things, thou shalt be a good minister. When you put the people in remembrance, this is what God has said. This is what is happening now. Everything is according to his word. This is prophecy being fulfilled. And you remind them that Christ is about to come. And everyone that is not saved, or backsliding shall come back and be saved and everyone that is saved and is not uh, living a consistent holy life and without holiness no man shall save the Lord you encourage them uh, and you pray with them uh, and you counsel them that whatever challenges in their lives not making them to show that consistent life of Christian faith and salvation you root that out of their lives and you lead them to real repentance and restoration and you lead them to that sanctification that without holiness no man shall say the Lord and then you let them seek the power of God that will strengthen them embolden them encourage them empower them that's what the Lord is calling us to and we do that without any fear and we do that without uh, you know shaking or uh, whatever before anyone it says you put the brethren in remembrance of this thing thou shalt be a good minister of Jesus Christ nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast 
ordained, uh, attained. It says in verse 16, uh, in verse 16, take heed unto thyself. Don't be timid. Take heed unto thyself. Live courageously. Live with conviction and live without compromise. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Amen. Look at number three here. Number three now, we're looking at the uh, firm decree of the most foremost wise king. That's God we're talking about. God is foremost, is the highest, is eternal, and is, uh, when one kingdom passes away, he still remains there. And when one king dies, and changes, and God changes him, and he setteth up another, God is still there. And when one powerful emperor, powerful man, powerful king, when he's deposed, when he's pushed aside, another one comes, God is still there. The same God at the time of uh, Pharaoh, the same God at the time of the Assyrian king Sennacherib, and the same God at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, the same God at the time of Herod, is still the same God on the throne. They come, they go. They come, they perish. They come, they are the throne. They come, they are driven away, but God remains the same. He is the foremost wise God and he has his own decree too. And when he makes his own decree, the decree of the eternal God will stand. We're looking at uh, Daniel chapter 2 and we're reading from verse 30. Daniel chapter 2, verse 30. But as for me, this secret is not revealed to me for any wisdom that I have more than any living, but for their sakes, that shall make known the interpretation to the king that thou mightest know the thoughts of thine heart. In Daniel chapter 4, we're looking at verse 17. Daniel chapter 4, verse 17. It says in verse 17, it tells us this matter is by the decree of the watches of the watchers and that and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high the most high god in heaven rules in the kingdom of men and giveth aid to whomsoever he will you see that the god of heaven the most high rulers in the kingdoms of men and he giveth the kingdoms to whomsoever he will and setteth over each even the people like look like the basest of men look at verse 24 in verse 24 it says this is the interpretation O king and this is the decree of the most high which is come upon my lord the king god is the one that rules and whoever he puts there he's still in charge and he has a decree that supersedes that goes beyond the decree of any man in proverbs chapter 8 reading from verse 29 proverbs chapter 8 and we're reading from verse 29. When he gave to the sea, here is Christ talking. And he said, when the Father, the Almighty, the ancient of days, when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment, when he appointed the foundations of the earth, then in verse 30, it says, Then I was by him. And then it says, As one brought up with him, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing 
always before him. Psalm 2, we're looking at verse 6. In Psalm 2, looking at verse 6, it says, Yet I have set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That's the Almighty saying. He has the final say. He has the final word about the dominions and the kingdoms of this world. And he says, I sent my, I set my king. That's his only begotten son. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. Look at verse 7. It says in verse 7, I will declare the decree. He has the final decree on any life on any king, on any community, on any nation. He has the final decree upon the kingdoms of this world. Nebuchadnezzar does not, did not have the final decree. There is another decree, the decree of the Almighty God that supersedes every other decree on earth. I will declare the decree the Lord have said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And then in verse 8, in verse 8 it says, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen, the Gentiles, for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Then in verse 9, in verse 9 he said, Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, because all judgment has been given to the hand of the Son of God, and shall dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And then in verse 10 he said, Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be wise now, O ye emperors. Be wise now, O ye rulers. Because there is one that is higher than the highest. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. And then in verse 11, in verse 11, serve the Lord with fear. That is your fear. If you don't come to the Lord and seek the Lord, now if you perish, if you die in a condition of your sinfulness, even though you are a king, even though you are an emperor, even though you are a ruler, where will you spend eternity? Serve the Lord. Come and repent. Come and seek the Lord and have salvation and remain and abide in that grace of God in salvation. It says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. And then in verse 12, it says, kiss the Son. Befriend the son. Make him your friend. And let all the wall of demarcation between you and the son, the savior, your substitute, and the redeemer. Let everything, the wall of demarcation be broken down and befriend him. Let him say, you are my friend because I have called you, I have chosen you, and I have washed your sin, and I have made you a new creature now in Christ. Kiss the son. Let he be angry. And ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled, but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Amen. You put your trust in him, in Christ, the Son of God, to be your Savior. You put your trust in him so that he can be your sanctifier. You put your trust in him so that he can empower you. And that power will make you to stand. And then you'll be witnesses unto him in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. And his nature will come into you. And because his nature comes into you, you will live the life that glorifies God the life that when time is ended here for you, for us, and for the world in the rapture, the resurrection, you'll go with the Lord in Jesus' name. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's stand up, talk to the Lord in prayer, and forget every other thing around you, and forget, you know, whatever it is, anything there, anything there. Forget everything and call upon the name of the Lord. We've learned so much today, and we need to take all that to the Lord so that His strength will be in us, His power will be in us, and the assurance and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction 
will be. You know, look at Daniel. Why can't you be another Daniel today? Talk to the Lord in prayer and say, oh Lord, here am I. I have heard about the unforgettable Daniel. I want to so live my life that I too, by the grace of God, in the strength of the Lord, and with the real salvation I have, I will live an unforgettable life. It starts with salvation. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here I am. That same change you made in Daniel, and that same transformation you made in Daniel, and that same courage you gave Daniel, and that same conviction you gave Daniel, I want to so live the life that I'll fear nothing on earth. And even if Kadnesa was a frown, with his fury, and uh, with his uh, fire, and fiery nature, Lord, give me the heart that will live for you, unforgettable, unforgettable, anywhere that I find myself in my community, I'll so have the truth, penetrating my life, saturating my life, and keeping me to stand firm on the truth. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, and tell him, oh Lord, here am I. Pray a decisive prayer, a decisive prayer between you and the Lord, telling the Lord, oh Lord, I want to have that kind of life that is firm, fearless, focused, living for your glory. Tell him, and he will do it in your life. That your life to your neighbors, your life to your community, your life, anywhere, everywhere, will be unforgettable. They'll know you are a child of God. They'll know you have the grace of God in you. They'll know that that grace of God in you teaches you to deny ungodliness and to deny all worldly lusts and then to live a righteous life, a godly life, a sober life. Tell the Lord, let the light of the gospel so shine in your life that everyone around you beholding you will know you are being of the Lord Jesus, that you are a new creature in Christ, that old things have passed away, and that all things have become new. And if you have friends, prayer partners, let them be people of this like precious faith. Let them be people who are not pretenders, who are not hypocrites. Let them be people who love the Lord like you love the Lord, who are committed to the Lord like you are committed to the Lord, who are consecrated to the Lord completely with all their heart, all their soul, and all their mind. Let them be people who have the same understanding and the same deep commitment as you have unto the Lord. Let us say how Daniel surrounded himself with people of like precious faith who are your friends. Are they people that easily give up? They can't endure a little persecution. They can't endure a little trial. They can't endure a passing decree. And they are shaking. And they, can't, they don't have the same faith you have in the promises of God. Are those your friends? Why don't you say, Lord, help me. Give me friends that have the same like precious faith. Friends that will stand where we ought to stand on the promises of God. Friends that have more of heaven than the earth in their lives. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord that you'll be able to have a common faith when you make petition before the Lord and then you pray with confidence any challenge Two of you shall agree together with confidence. Any problem, common problem you're trying to solve, and you pray with confidence. Confidence in the Lord that I know, I know, I know that God will answer. And you have common confidence, the same confidence in the promises of God, that while they are yet speaking, I will answer. And before they finish making their petition, I'll give them the solution. 
and you have that confidence yourself and then you surround yourself with the people that have the same the same confidence the people that have a different doctrine a different interpretation a different lifestyle a backsliding lifestyle a compromising lifestyle no the people that hold on to this world and they say come watch me here is where i stand and i stand with you <clears throat> i stand with you tell the lord and when god answers prayer then you come with praise praise before the perpetual praise. You're always praising the Lord. You're never grumbling, never complaining. Why did God bring me to this situation? Morning, noon, and night, you're praising the Lord. The answer has come. You're praising the Lord. The Jericho walls are still up. You're praising the Lord. The night in the dungeon, midnight with Paul and Silas you are praising the Lord and it's a praise of God in your mouth perpetually that will grant you that miraculous answer that you are seeking present time praise the Lord hold up praise the Lord traffic jam praise the Lord on the long queue of sweating in your car, praising the Lord at all times, in all things, at all places, in every situation. When the people of the world are talking negative and they're talking divergent things, you have your mouth filled with the praises of the Lord. Personal, personal praise personal praise. Praising the Lord in a personal way. That man said, seven days, seven times in the day, I praise your name and pray unto you. Every other hour, just remember the Lord. He is in charge. He is in charge. He is in charge. Nebuchadnezzar not taking the power away from the most high God. God is still in charge. Praise him all the time. And when you are before the people of this world, the fearless, bold, courageous, don't think of man more than you think of God. Think of God. Meditate on God. Lean on God. Rely on God. Whatever is happening, if that thing is not of God, it will soon pass away. Any decree for many earthly king, that thing will pass away. Is the decree of the King of Kings, the decree of the Lord of Lords that will stand forever and ever. Don't be afraid of any situation caused by man, planned by man, Effected by man, he is man, she is just a woman, the king of heaven that has the final decree. And that final decree says you will live. That final decree says no man shall lay any hand on you to hurt you. The final decree, the decree of God says, he'll give you a long life until you finish the calling he has given you. The decree of the foremost 
wise king. He's wise. He knows what you need. He knows the direction of your life. He knows the calling upon your life. And has made a decree. For the son, his only begotten son. And for you, son of God, daughter of God. He'll do good in your life. Think of that. Meditate on that. He will see you through. Daniel lived all the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Nebuchadnezzar. He lived beyond the days of Belshazzar. He lived beyond the days of the Middle Persian Empire. He lived, he lived, he lived. And all through his life, no fear, no timidity, no shaking, no compromise. And the grace of God preserved him until he finished what God called him to do. He's gone. You are here. The Lord will see you through. Amen. <clears throat> In Jesus' name we pray. Can I tell you that the Lord has answered your prayer? That everything you have been afraid of and your heart was beating for, the problem is solved. The secret that perplexed you as you go back home, the Lord himself will reveal that secret. Your life will be lived straightforward, courageously, lovingly, confidently. You are not rude to anybody, and you are not cruel to anybody, and nobody will be rude or cruel to you in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand, please. Father, in Jesus' name. We well, thank you for what you did for Daniel in particular, for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and for that team. And they came to the king, and the king then dropped all his threat. He was going to kill everybody. Lord, we pray you will use your sons and your daughters in the service today here all over the nation, all over the continent, all over the world, do something special with every brother, every sister in Jesus' name. All the evil decree that other people, other kings or presidents or whatever, leaders of the world that they are bringing up that will ruin, that will destroy, that will slay the lives of people, use your sons here, use your daughters here, Use your sons everywhere and your daughters. Bring them to the position that they will crush and destroy all evil decrees in Jesus' name. Now, Lord, we're just getting to know some good new revelations. And Lord, now that we have this revelation, which we didn't have in the past, concerning our personal lives and concerning your church and concerning the believers everywhere, Lord, spare our lives. Prolong our lives so that all that we are getting to know now, we will make use of them profitably in our communities everywhere in Jesus' name. Let the joy of the Lord be the strength of your people. Let the knowledge of the Almighty strengthen us from within in Jesus' name. Lord, you know us, we know ourselves in the past. We have been timid, we have been fearful, we have been doubtful, we have been anxious. But now, from this present time, let the power of God make us stay. The strength of God energize us in Jesus' name. And Lord, 
watch, no more fear. No more fear of the devil. No more fear of evil spirits. No more fear of any man. No more fear of any woman. No more fear of any decree of man in our lives in Jesus' name. Lord, strengthen your people. Energize your people. Empower your people. And help us to have our eyes open so that we look straight ahead and nothing will divert us in Jesus' name. Power for everyone. Strength for everyone. Vision for everyone. Stability of life for everyone. And Lord, by your special, special gift, long life for everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. morning to Emmanuel Christian Center Ministries. Amen? Amen. 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 Moving right along, right along. Come on now, because he is in this place. Yes, we will now have tithes and offerings by our minister, Lisa Buckner. Amen. Amen. Let's not stop praising him. Let's not stop praising him. This is the most important part that we can partake. We can show the Lord our God, how much we appreciate everything he's doing for us and everything he has done for us. You know, we have to continue because in this life, believe it or not, you need money. So we are here to talk about tithes and offering, but not so much about tithes and offering because you know your obligation when it comes to tithes and offering. So we're not going to focus on that, but I am going to read the scripture, Luke 6, 38. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together, running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that you met withal, it shall be measured to you again. Is that what you want? Is that what you expect? God's word won't turn into him void. So if you're not getting what you want, it ain't got nothing to do with God. Check yourself. So we thank God for this, this opportunity to give. Just, just remember all our baskets up here. Remember the seed offerings. And remember Lifeline. Have you ever needed somebody to give you a hand up? Have you ever needed somebody to give you an encouraging word? Have you ever been down and out and just didn't know what to do? You didn't know who to call? Well, we want to get this Lifeline Center up and running. They need us. Our young people need us. All this killing and guns and this and that. We can't leave it to the government. Jesus, Jesus has the answer. And he's going to 
going to help us with that answer through Lifeline. So dig in your pockets because it is important. It is very important. We need it now. We're asking God to move and to send in the funds because we know he has control over it all. And we are expecting it soon. Ushers. Jesus, we thank you for the givings. We thank you, Lord God, because we know you will supply of every need, Lord God. If we do what you ask us to do, then you will take care of us, Lord God. And we thank you for everyone that's given on the sound of my voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Minister Buckner. Amen. Amen. All right, we will now have announcements by Missionary Monica Vini followed by a special offering from Elder Fanny Johnson. Amen? Amen. Good morning. Good morning. The announcements are as follow. Please pick up your new licenses from Sister Mary Lee Langley after you have paid your dues. The cost of dues is on the bulletin board in the lobby. Your old ones with a 2023 date have expired. Please pick up your current license as soon as possible. This is a reminder that noonday prayers held here at ECC every Wednesday at 12 noon with Elder Linda McCorkle. It is open to all who wants to come in and pray. Amen. 2023 convocation t-shirts are now available for order. An order form with the sizes and costs is on the bulletin board in the lobby. As always, payment must be made prior to your order being placed. Amen. And these are the lovely t-shirts today. It says, it's time to call on God. Holy Convocation 2023.
So we want to see you all with the Holy Convocation t-shirt on at Holy Convocation. Amen? Amen. 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 See, please see our youth pastor, Shalor Bracey, to purchase Lifeline t-shirts and hoodies. The church door is now open each Sunday after service for purchase of snacks, sodas, and water. All proceeds from the sales go to Lifeline. The African American Pastors Council is holding its revival Monday, May the 1st through Wednesday, May the 3rd at 7 o'clock p.m. at Dr. Alvin Edwards' Mount Zion First African Baptist Church in Charlottesville. Bishop Jackson will be expediting the service on Tuesday night, May the 2nd. Amen? Amen. The wake for Dr. Ruth I.G. Moore, who passed away on Wednesday, April the 26th, will be held Thursday, May the 4th, from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock p.m. at the Tower of Deliverance in Richmond. The funeral service will follow on Friday, May the 5th, at 12 o'clock noon at Tower of Deliverance. Please see Sister Mary Lee Langley after service to use your card for tithe and offerings, campaign pledges, seat in the ground, lifeline contribution, or any other church-related donations. It says, thank you very much. Bishop Michael Jackson and First Lady Jackson and ECCM members, this card is to let you know that we appreciated the enjoyable fruit. Thanks again, and God bless Deacon and Deaconess Thomas. Amen? Amen. It says, amazing you. God has gifted you in so many ways, celebrating his goodness that shines through the things you do. Pastor Loretta Malcolm, God bless. It's that blessed are the givers and grateful are the receivers. Thank you so much, Pastor Malcolm. And this concludes my announcements, but after we have uh, sing happy birthday, uh, Sister, pa excuse me, Pastor Holmes was coming up for a special presentation. Right now, we would like to wish a happy birthday to our Deaconess Renee Brown. Amen? <laughs> to you happy birthday to you happy birthday dear sister happy birthday to you good morning everyone thank you lord because of your mercy upon us we thank you lord because of your grace upon us we thank you, Lord, because of your abundant place. Thank you, Lord, because of what you have been doing and what you will still continue to do. We thank you, Lord, because in a special way this afternoon, you are going to meet us at the port of our name. We thank you, Lord, because no one among us will go empty handed. We thank you, Lord, because of what you have done in the past. We thank you, Lord, because of what you are going to do today. We thank you, Lord, because of your presence that will come down before us. The Bible let me know, not by power, not by mighty, but by your grace, by your love, but your abundant mercy. It is out of that mercy we come before you all today. We are talking about qualification. Does nothing make us qualify to be before you? Prayer, we cannot pray. Fasting, we are not able. Holiness, it cannot be ever be mentioned. But because of your grace, because of your mercy, because of the blood of the Jesus Christ on the Calvary, it is on that we depend. It is on that we have faith. It is on that we are acting. It is on that we come before you. We pray by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. That blood will be sufficient for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, if there is no sin, there is no this. It's because of who we are. That's why you sacrifice yourself. Let us see you in your greeting. We are born. Amen. Uh, I want us to be responding so that you you they will hear me as I'm leading. So I'll yes. say in name. So let's say uh, want to pray tonight. Basically, number one, for children. Program the GSC. Then we are going to be praying for as many old that are having strange children, strange children. There are children we call strange children. There are many that 
a father and the mothers are having high blood pressure because of the kind of children they are having. Some have caused a lot of pain in the heart of their parents, and some children even end up putting their, their, uh, their parents in a serious problem. For children that were brought up in the way of the Lord, but they were hijacked by Satan, hijacked by the powers of darkness. But today, as we read, we dance, and we cry unto God in unison, and we call upon God in authority of the word of God, we are trusting God that such children will be rescued from the powers of darkness. And whatever have held those children in the land of captivity, they will let go. There are children who come to the campus. They were Christian, or probably they were not even Christian. But getting to the campus, they just go the opposite direction of what they were being taught at all. And by the time you confront those children, you see that they are almost looking like Isabel. Some of them are looking like ruffians and rascals. And you will never believe in a Christian home. You will never believe. Why? Because of the level at which the devil has dealt with them. But tonight, it's not just a night of just discussing them. It's a night of standing in the gap. Have you realized that there are not many people praying, you know, for some situation? Yes, we pray about economy, we pray about some issues, but sometimes the children, they come for prayer meeting like this, and we remember so many things, and we don't really, really pray. And so tonight's prayer, number one, we shall pray for the GS program this week, starting on Thursday, and then after which, we will also uh, transcend to our home, our own home, and then remember all our children as parents it's never our desire and our prayer to bury our children never never are we going to bury them never 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 will our children die young or die untimely or never will the enemy make a recapture of our children or never will the powers of darkness have an inroad into their life or determine their destiny never this is the more reason why it is important we are intentional in the place of prayer. And so as we want to launch a prayer now, we are going to be asking the Lord to strengthen us to pray, empower us to pray. Prayer has level and prayer has cadres. That tonight the Lord can so help you as an individual. The Lord can so quicken you and so energize you. The Lord can so empower Power you to pray. You want to ask the Lord for me. Let me adura for me lagbara o baba for me. Let me adura koma shere mi loju ogo for me. Let me adura for me lagbara o baba for me. Let me adura koma shere mi loju ogo. The song is saying, give me the spirit of prayer, give me the power, give me the spirit of prayer, so I will not get tired on the battlefield. What a song. I want to go before the Lord, that the Lord will empower us to pray tonight. Empower me to pray. 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 Me to that it shall come to pass that I will fall upon the house of David. House of David, house of David. Well, the spirit of grace and supplication is in your tongue. And the power in the glory of Jesus to empower me with the spirit of prayer. Thank God to empower me with the spirit of prayer. Oh, my Heavenly Father, empower me with the spirit of prayer. Lord of Lord, empower me with the spirit of prayer. Thank God, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. You will empower me with the spirit of prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I will see your presence. Lord, I will see your presence. Oh, my Heavenly Father, I will see your presence. I will see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Your name, 
your name will be glorified in my life. Your name will be glorified in my life. I pray by the power of Jesus Christ, you will empower me with the prayer of prayer in the name of Jesus. Christ. The aid of prayer in the name of Jesus. Christ. Things will think inspire me with the prayer of prayer. I will see you. I will see you. I will see you. I will see you, oh Lord. I will see you. I will see you. I will see you in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me see you in a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, Lord. Things of things. Let me see you in a new dimension in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty Father, let me see you. Oh Lord, Lord, let me see you. Things of things, let me see you. Mighty Father, let me see you in the name of Jesus Christ. For the name of the Lord. And we are asking tonight that there will be an empowerment. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Very quickly, we are going to pray for the children. We cannot tell exactly what God has told the GS that is coming up with all of this program. I remember say 2001, and I remember particularly what the Lord did for me, even though I was already born again, I was already a child of God, but the impact of say 2001 is still living with me till today. The impact of that singular success academy for you at National Stadium in Lagos, I cannot forget it in a hurry. I cannot forget the impact of say 2002 at DLCC. And these were two programs that really really i cannot forget them in a hurry there is always a day in the life of everything you want to go before the lord even at this time the star program that is coming up i want to believe we are all aware of this great program and there's a serious serious planning going on here in delta state uh, particularly in worry region and as leaders, we had meeting even this evening that we finished around six or to six there about. And the, the church is even going all length to rent a place that is quite expensive for, uh, for quite expensive, not just one million, a place, just an event center, very powerful event center here in Wari. And we are using it on five on Saturday and on Sunday for the young people and the children. A lot, you know, I was impressed. I, I mean, I mean, nobody will come there. Even when the youth will hear now that that's where we are using for them, they will be impressed that the, the, the leadership really had them in heart to have taken them to such a place that some of them cannot even enter or they have never been before and all that. And it's an opportunity to get converts to get a lot of outsiders to come instead of bringing them to the church. And so we are preparing seriously, urgently going to school. And even by 12 midnight, some people will be calling upon the Lord, having serious prayer, just few minute prayer, still for this program. Because we know that something will happen in this program. We know that many young people will be changed. We know man, many of our children who have been probably having strength, spirit, and power will be delivered. We know that many mediocre among the young people, the Lord will set them free. And so we are going before the Lord now. First and foremost, we shall commit our to God in prayer. Our Father in the Lord, Pastor W.F. Kumwe, we want to pray that supernatural so the end of the rest upon him. The Bible says, who made his angels, spirits, and ministers a flaming fire, that the God of heaven will continually make his servant a flaming fire, a flaming fire, a flaming fire. The GS will continually be a sharp pressing instrument in the hand of the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, shall we pray? Almighty Father, we bring Jesus to your hand. 
to pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are going to use him mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. He will continue to be pursued on you in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift up your servant, our Father in the Lord, Pastor W.F. coming into your hand, O God. Mighty God, I'm asking my Father God that we enjoy the fullness of God's grace and power and anointing upon his life and ministry in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh God, I am asking my Father God that your hand of power your anointing will be so mighty upon his life in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The people that lived in the days of John Wesley will say that they were privileged to live in such a day. The people who lived in the time of Judge Finney, D.L. Moody, George Fletcher, George Whitefield, Abada William Law, John, and all of these men, Judge Finney, and even uh, Charles Paul Jones. Men who lived in their day will be would you know that that we are privileged to, to have such a man? We are going to lift his hand up to God. A man that has been totally sold out to God completely, despite his age. We want to ask the Lord, so supernatural strength will descend upon GH. He will yeah. not experience any weakness this weekend. He will just discover his ministry and is not tired. He will discover so divine strength and uncommon strength. Let it come on in and upon the wife. Shall we pray? Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ, which are power we pray. So in the name of Jesus Christ. So because we operate fierce in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my dear Father, we do not Are you praying? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lord, you will send the people of power upon the years in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty Father, we pray the power that be on power. Almighty Father, I pray by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ. As it's Jesus, good. we pray. Amen. Now we're going to pray now for the, the children. <laughs> we're going to add that the tunnel will be encouraging. The hand of the Lord shall rest upon this program all over the world. Young people will join. Young people will connect on the internet. Young people will come to the various centers where they will be invited to all, that nothing will hinder anyone from attending. And through this program, many lives will be transformed. Many young people, many adults will connect, and they are strangers to the commonwealth of Israel. They will encounter God. They will encounter divinity. They will encounter the monarch of Zion. They will encounter the supernatural God. Let's talk to God in prayer. Oh Lord, let there be reign of starvation. Reign of starvation in Europe. Reign of starvation in America, South and North America. Reign of starvation only further in Australia. Reign of starvation in Asia. Reign of starvation in Antarctica. Reign of starvation in Nigeria. Reign of starvation in Africa. Let's say, oh! Reign of salvation, O oh God, in the Arab world, in the Oceanic. Lord, I pray there will be reign of salvation. Shall we talk to God in prayer? There will be salvation. Let's talk to God in prayer. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, we will be saved, Lord. You know, this that we be salvation. By the power of that we be salvation, that we be salvation. That we be only just baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty oh, Father, for all these youth in the new dimension, you are going to lead them in the name of Jesus Christ. Something that all expected, something that have never ever happened in, in the Christendom, that this program is, uh, is coming up, oh, Father, you will do in the name of Jesus Christ. You will show your power, you will show your mighty hand. You will show your power, you will show your greatness. Jesus will in the name. Amen. Amen. It's important to take this prayer very seriously. Uh, the, the children or the parents or father's mother who have children who are not born again, they can tell what they are getting. That have become another thing entirely. They can tell the pain in their hearts. 
Some children are literally causing pain in the heart of their parents. How do you explain a child brought up in the way of the Lord, and then all of a sudden that child becomes pregnant? And then not that because of marriage or whatever. How do you explain a child is caught with something? A father maybe did that. How do you explain having children who refuse? Deliberately going the way of Bela, the way of Bela, the way of the children of Belia. And then it's a serious pain. And this is why I want to plead with all. If we have children who are born again, then we should be glad. But that's not all. There's still the devil in the world. There's still Satan in the world. And prayer can never be too much. You cannot pray too much for your children. You cannot pray too much for your wife. You cannot pray too much for your family. As a matter of fact, the devil is fighting the last day battle. The devil is fighting to nail to make sure no family escape from his own uh, uh, antics and tactics. We want to go before the Lord right now. And we want to pray as many of our leaders and members on the platform whose children are not born again. I don't mean they go to church. How many children in our church? They go to church, but they are not born again. That is the truth. They may be singing in the choir, but they are not born again. They may be gifted and know how to play keyboard, but they are not born again. What does it mean to be born again? But they are not. They can be sanctimonial, but they are not sanctified. Let's pray. The Lord God will save their soul. The Lord God will deliver and give us genuine salvation. Salvation will hit our children. Salvation will touch them very early. In the name of Jesus, so the first of them who are already matched.